I have uh, a question for Anna. Do you think, or you can pick a mic, you can take some water, by the way. Do you think you could use Stefan's repetitive work <laughs> for a data set? <laughs> I think Stefan could use his repetitive work for a data yeah. set. Because yeah. I think for me, it's not, I'm, I think it's really beautiful. And I think there are lots of parallels mm -hmm. from how mm -hmm. you were talking about memory and kind of surprise mm -hmm. and um, categorization and repetition. I think there are lots and lots of parallels between maybe how we both work in very different ways. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be for you to explore it. I'm not interested in taking your work and making something with it. I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it might be really interesting for you to see what other, like how a non-human agent could interpret those kind of like half glimpses of landscapes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. make like almost another memory of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A question for you, Vlad. Um, it is clear in the work of these artists that they uh, they trans transcend the idea of a landscape uh, beyond a s an object or a subject. Um, they use the landscape to change it, to th change the landscape itself. What do you think of that? They change the landscape itself. Yeah, that's a question for the artist. I think. Ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. think uh, have to. Uh, um well yeah what your your question basically it's 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 a classical one if you think about the relationship between uh, uh culture um uh, nature and uh and nurture basically between culture and, and and nature so i think that i we all hope that what they produce um can somehow be used in our encounter of nature that would be interesting because that way uh, the two domains um, uh, 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 will learn from each other and we would, be, we would find a, a better place for ourselves in the world. But has, that has always been the case. So my answer, in a way, it's disappointing because it has always been the case. Mm. Uh, or it has we have always tried to, to, to look to artists and to uh, put a little bit of pressure on them. I, I always tell my students that so they chose the worst and the most difficult job that is on earth <laughs> you know it's because they have to change the world um, not the engineers but the artists uh, or the or the artist in the engineer has yeah. to change so yeah. that's what i'm trying to yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. but i had a question for patricia can i ask you? please please I, i'm really I, I really like your gen uh, mineralogy uh, mineralogical studies and everything in there but many of the pieces that we've been uh, we were privileged enough to touch and and, and look up uh, uh, look at uh, were related to jewelry, so um, but you, didn't, you didn't tell us much about that. Like, how would you um, basically uh, um, relate the study of matter uh, and stones to to jewelry making, and how how do you see that point? Um, so you mean where I define the border between jewelry or well objects? The inference, no, the, the inference. Or what, what, how do you make the choice? Of yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, um, I normally work, um, sometimes I think actually if I am a good jeweler or a bad jeweler, you know, because I, I really work, um, I work on a tie wheel as a, a sculpture would do, you know. Um, so I don't work so much on the, on the body uh, as normally jewelry uh, work. But in a way, I also think that's also, partly is also the strength of my work, you know, because I, have this, or I seem to have this capacity to bring things that somehow are monumental, and I found a way that they kind of connect um, to the body. Um, so I don't really know how to how do I make the choice that some turn to be jewelry and some don't, um, but it, it's just like something natural that occurs during the process of of making. Yeah, but uh, of course, jewelry has some limitations in terms of functionality and weight. Um, so obviously, the I don't know the the agate that was uh, passing by. I mean, unless I cut it a thin <laughs> slice, I cannot make that jewelry, right? Mm -hmm. So my work also plays with those um, limitations, and I, I sort I sort of think that jewelry offers me this frame to. So in a way, as it is a limitation, is also uh, a liberation most of the times. Yeah. Did I answer? Yes, you did. Yeah? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about framing and, and, and 
um, approaching your, your subject. Uh, Stefan, um, you, you use these digital tools to zoom in and zoom out and, and sort of make a frame around uh, the creation of your work. How do you, how do you choose this? Where, where do you start and where do you say, okay, from, from this point out, I will create a landscape or I create a painting or work? Yeah, it's yeah the the zooming in and zooming out. It's um, when painting the painting just like the the image appears by paint, and I think when you're in a landscape, you experience it like it's this 360 view. You have the smell, you have you feel the air, you have you feel texture. That's really immense to capture. So if you're dealing with landscape as an artist, you frame in any sense. So uh, in this series of the, the chronicles, there's this framing that's this, this already there. You see, like, you, you don't know how big the landscape is, just uh, how big is the frame. That's, um, yeah, something that that's, uh, yeah, keeps yeah, m making questions and, and yeah, it can go in any direction in a sense. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, we saw a lot of repetitiveness in, in all three of the artistic practices. Um, is this something... I quickly need to think. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, the, the output of, uh, of multiple images from an artificial intelligence uh, um, algorithm, I would call it, um, and, and the repetitiveness of your speculations about these memories, that uh, return in your paintings. Um, I don't know if this question makes sense, but is it the same realness or is it the same artificialness? How is it the same, the, the creation of this repetitiveness? Yeah, I think in my case, it's it has to do with coincidence. Paint is something you can control, but not totally. So there's coincidence, and that's yeah, a bit of the magic of painting. Yeah. That's the strength of painting, and I think with artificial artificial intelligence, there's also she leaves a part <coughs> to the artificial intelligence to generate imagery and and see what's yeah what's how surprising the outcome yeah. can be. Yeah, yeah there's definitely yeah. a gap that I leave, and what you were talking about about mm -hmm. coincidence is something that is very embedded in how I try to use use it as as a as a way of working, and I think I think using although i use words like dreaming and hallucinating i think talking about when you talk about memory and artificial intelligence it's it's not it's it's different it's a very different way of recalling mm -hmm. and it's a very different way of kind of like trying to re-grasp and reinterpret the world so although i think conceptually we probably are thinking around the kind of same Mechanically, how paint works and mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. and how these algorithms work are doing fundamentally very different things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, although mm -hmm. the outcome is the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. um, you, Vlad, you talked about fragmentation also um, in your work. Patricia is also very important. Can you tell a little bit more about uh, fragmentation? Well, I found it fascinating what you were saying uh, about this connection of the idea of the whole and that a fragment can represent the whole too. Yeah, I feel that I'm constantly dealing uh, with this aspect that, yeah, that the little fragment of the landscape has the capacity to represent the whole thing. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I said it's related to a whole, right? So that's yeah. very it's essential to... Um, it's, it's essential to every landscape to have um, um, a fragment of nature, at least to our, to our, to our Western idea of uh, landscape, of... Um, um, is to have a, a, a partition related to a larger whole. Huh? Yeah. It's uh, you need both of them. In uh, we always cut cut things out in order to relate to. to but maybe the, the the only problem that you were um, asking in the first question is precisely this: how do we how do we, uh, how do we relate uh, uh, the the fragment that we see to to a broader history of our place here and a broader broader um, yeah let's say a planet let's mm -hmm. let's put it like this mm -hmm. or universe because mm -hmm. of the picture of Apollo 8 already mm -hmm. speaks volumes on mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Thank you. I see that our time is almost done. Um, are there any more questions for our four speakers of this evening from the audience? 
No. Then Rida, I look one more last time at your drawings. Too bad for you. Uh, no, so if I was just uh, contemplating 360 landscape uh, face you need to own to look 360 degrees in a landscape. Uh, the artist becoming a diamond uh, with the pressure and all. <laughs> uh, and yeah, this is my best. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm sorry. Uh, two hours too long to draw. Uh, but, but it was very interesting. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vida. I hope this uh, has been an inspiring evening, uh, uh, an evening full of new perspectives. Um, and um, I would li really like to thank all four of you uh, to come tonight. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for this evening. <laughs>